Sly. Can you see the slide? Yeah, I can see your slide. So our next speaker is Hugo Bartolomeis from Université de Bagui. Uh, so let's take place. Okay, thank you. Uh, so today I'm very glad to introduce you my PhD research project about uh, statistic, uh, fractional statistics from ion collision. So this work has been done at uh, Ecole Normale Supérieure at, under the supervision of uh, Gwendal Fev. And the sample come from a good collaboration could we have you, for could years. You, could you turn the sound up a bit, please? Sorry. Is it better? Yeah. Okay, sorry. Uh, so yes, the sample comes from a good collaboration with the C2M uh, and uh, are made with uh, gallium arsenide uh, heterostructure. So the principle is uh, uh, we want to create, we have a three QPC uh, uh, geometry and we want to use two uh, input QPC to generate two dilute beam of quasi particle toward a central beam splitter and we can then uh, probe the cross correlation at the output of this splitter to measure the ability of particle to bunch together or exclude. So this can be done both in the Ettinger and fractional uh, quantum mole effect. So let me first do some reminder about the quantum exchange statistic. Uh, so the question we want to address here is uh, what is the symmetry of uh, many body wave function describing an ensemble of indistinguishable quantum particles when we swap the position of two of its particles? So during this process, uh, your wave function will accumulate some phase, uh, an exchange phase. And uh, if you use this process twice, uh, you should recover for a three-dimensional uh, system uh, that uh, the same situation, meaning that doing twice this operation is equivalent to the identity. So this leads to a constraint on the exchange phase that will lead to either a phase zero or a phase pi. So this will lead to the two big kingdom of particle. Uh, the boson with a phase zero will have some bunching property. So the typical example of uh, boson is the photon. And this bunching effect can be seen, for example, in laser. On the other hand, you have the fermion with a phase pi that have some anti-benching properties. And this anti-benching is just what we call the poly-exclusion principle. After that, so in the late 70s, a uh, prediction was made by Miraim and Lenas that uh, for system in reduced space, like two-dimensional or one-dimensional system, uh, this uh, twice, doing twice the operator is no longer uh, identity. And therefore, you have no constraint on the phase. And some extension in this system should host some uh, uh, particle with any phase in between zero and pi. And therefore, uh, there should exist some third kind of particle with intermediate uh, behavior, with intermediate bunch of behavior, behavior between fermion and boson. So the term anion was coined by Frank Wilchild a few years after to uh, reflect this any phase factor. Okay, so in 82, we had the discovery of the fractional quantum mole effect. So here you have a, a typical uh, all bar measurement when you can, where you can measure both longitudinal and transversal resistance of a sample. And we see that beyond this uh, integer state, we have a new old zoology of fractional state with fractional filling factor and fractional uh, plateau resistance. So Quickly after, the prediction was made that uh, this excitation, this new excitation, are actually anionic. And they should show both all various fractional charge and uh, show host uh, various fractional statistics. So today, I will be interested in uh, the so-called low thin state uh, with a thinning factor 1 over m with m odd integer that should uh, uh, host uh, both a fractional uh, charge E over M and a fractional statistic with the phase of P over M. So the typical example here would be for M equals three, equals three. 
it's it has always all it has also been shown that uh, this ion should uh, obey some intermediate level of exclusion between boson and fermion and obey their own modified poly principle. So the first thing that has been achieved with this fractional state is uh, the measurement of the fractional charge in the so-called uh, shot noise measurement. So we use in that uh, configuration only one quantum point contact and we send toward it a current I nut. So we can induce by pinching the QPC a small backscatter current that will uh, randomly uh, partition uh, particle toward uh, the arm three or the arm four. And this will lead to a current fluctuation directly proportional to the input current, but also to the charge. Notice uh, that uh, in the fractional regime, uh, to uh, be able to uh, tunnel uh, some quasi fractional quasi particle, you need to be in the so-called weak backscattering regime, in which you still have some 2D electron gas under the quantum pump contact that are able to convey this fractional charge through the bulk. So we can also add some uh, thermal rounding, but still what we have is at high bias, uh, we have a, a slope directly proportional to the charge. So here we have two uh, different measurements from the late 90s uh, that show some uh, one third quasi particle measurement. So you see, we have a, a slope which is three times uh, lower than the one expected for fermionic uh, behavior. So that's how we detect some fractional charge. But uh, up to that, uh, we don't have uh, some uh, independent measurement of statistical effect. We have some very strong uh, uh, indication that uh, these excitations are unique. They have both fractional conductance and fractional charge. Uh, and to measure this statistical effect, there are two ways that have been inquired. So the first one will be with uh, single, uh, single source interferometers like uh, Fabry Perrault or Max Zender. So a typical Fabry Perrault experiment will be uh, to measure directly what is the phase accumulated by a particle moving around the cavity and see the change in the phase when we change the number of particles inside the cavity. So that, that there is a beautiful measurement of that in the, the one third state by the Manfra group. And I think you will have some presentation by James Nakamura tomorrow on these geometries. Uh, so I will focus on uh, noise measurement and more precisely on cross correlation noise measurement with several sources. And in this uh, geometry, you want to directly uh, probe the bunching property of the particle. More precisely, uh, we'll be using uh, the so-called ion collider geometry that has been proposed by Rosno, Levkiski, and Alperin in 2016. So Rosno has already uh, presented you uh, the working principle, but that we will do it again. So we can uh, use two uh, input quantum point contacts as anion sources. So we can turn uh, them in the weak backscattering regime to induce uh, some quasi-particle tunneling to uh, input the input arm of the central beam splitter. And the same thing can occur at the central beam splitter where collusion can happen. And then we can cross uh, cross correlation. We, we can probe the cross correlation as output three and four. Okay, so except for the anion uh, sources, uh, the center of the sample is an and the light geometry. So the question is the same, is what is happening to uh, two particles incoming simultaneously on the central beam splitter? So firstly, they can bunch together. And as we can see, this will create a big accumulation of charge on one side and some vacancy on the other side in comparison with the uh, average current of one particle in both sides. And therefore, this will lead to negative cross correlation. On the other side, on the other hand, if particles tend to exclude each other, you will have no fluctuation from uh, the average current, and this will vanish totally the cross-correlation. With this simple toy model, uh, 
we can add some uh, p exclusion quasi probability to mimate uh, this kind of purely quantum uh, model. And with that, we can uh, favorize either benching effect or anti-benching effect. So for instance, with p positive, we will favorize anti-benching. For p equal one, especially, you see that this term totally disappeared and this term comes to one. And this will be uh, the case for a purely thermionic electron case. And for P negative, we have some uh, increased benching effect. Okay, so as shown by uh, Bernd Rosno in the first talk, we can uh, put this classical model uh, to the collider geometry. So this is the balance uh, version of the collider in which we highlight the most uh, this statistical effect uh, with a tot uh, current different uh, null and the only parameter will be the total input current I plus. So we can compute the cross correlation, which is proportional to this input current to the charge and some uh, scattering parameter of the uh, central quantum point contact but also to this one minus p factor that is here to take into account uh, the statistical effect. So we can define like that a pseudo final factor p that will encapsulate all the information about the statistic. So an example would be so if we take fermion, we accept with a phase uh, p, uh, we accept some exclusion process that will lead to uh, no cross correlation and therefore a p factor zero. For boson, we will expect some bunching and negative cross correlation, and this will lead to a negative p, fa p factor. Anions that are supposed to be between fermion and boson will also show some bunching and therefore negative cross correlation. And you can compute uh, the value expected for the Laughlin uh, state of minus two, so in the weak backscattering regime, and this is the calculation from the Rosno paper. So I won't go into more detail here because uh, it has already de de uh, presented today. Uh, but the full chiral integer liquid description, uh, you can describe the charge, uh, the charge transport at the edge of the sample with this uh, bosonic field. And we can see that already in the uh, commutation of this bosonic field is encapsulated uh, the statistic inside the bulk. You can also, uh, uh, model, uh, modelize uh, the central QPC with this uh, tunnel, um, tunneling Hamiltonian that will uh, swap particles from one edge to the other. Finally, uh, the two input current are, uh, uh, <clears throat> are model, modelized by uh, some uh, random Poissonian uh, via variable atop, on top of Fermi C. And in that uh, geometry, uh, we can compute uh, the expected cross correlation signal with the uh, total input current and recover the uh, p factor uh, for the uh, Lichinger liquid description. For instance, for uh, the Ruffin state one third, with this parameter, one should have a p factor of minus two. Okay, so now uh, let's go to the sample. So I have. <coughs> a lot of contact uh, on which I can perform some locking measurement to measure the transmission at the various QVC. And by sweeping the field, I can ensure that I have a perfect transmission and no back reflection for the state of interest. That will be uh, two and three here for the integer state and one third for the Laughlin state. So first of all, we need to uh, make some charge char characterization uh, to be sure that every QPC is in the right regime of emission. So we need to, uh, to stay and to come back to a single QPC shot noise measurement. So for the QPC one, for the first source, uh, what, we, what I do is I close the central QPC to recover all the noise that can be uh, uh, partitioned uh, at the QPC1 uh, to the contact four, where I, where I can perform some autocorrelation noise. On top of V1, we can add a small lock-in signal to measure the transmissions through the QPC. And with that, we can compare with the theoretical prediction, both for 
uh, electron and uh, one third uh, quasi particle. And what we check here is uh, in red, we have the integered case. So yes, it's for new equal two. And uh, in blue, uh, we have uh, the result for the uh, one third case in the weight backscattering regime. Uh, and uh, we do see uh, that for various uh, small deletion, we have uh, a good uh, quasi-particle emission in the one-third regime and electronic uh, emission in the integer regime. So we can do the same at the opposite uh, side and uh, characterize the QPC2. And same, we get the right regime of emission in the right feeding factor. For the central QPC, uh, we uh, what we see, what we do is so we still want to uh, have only one partition center. So we let uh, the input QPC open, and we can send directly a current I not to the central QPC. But uh, this time we can uh, probe the uh, current fluctuation at both output three and four, and measure both uh, autocorrelation three, autocorrelation four, and cross correlation signal. Let's notice that uh, in this uh, single part QPC uh, geometry, uh, both signal autocorrelation and cross correlation will be equal up to a sign. So this is uh, what the result for the central QPC. And uh, we see that so here uh, the positive curves are autocorrelation and the negative are uh, cross correlation curve. And this fits also nicely with uh, a charge E for a new equal two and three and a charge one third in the uh, weak backscattering regime for one third. Okay, now we can go to the most exciting part. Uh, so the anion collider. So now we are back into a three continuous point contact setup. Uh, we are in the balance situation with uh, uh, V1 and V2 uh, are equal. The transmission at the input are also equal to TI, TS, set, uh, this will be set in the weak backscattering regime for the uh, fractional uh, case, and uh, we have no difference of current, and uh, only uh, total input current will, will be uh, the parameter of interest. And we want to measure the cross correlation and extract this p factor uh, from this uh, cross correlation measurement. So first, for uh, new equal two, so uh, we can uh, so. Uh, we can uh, change the dilution at the input here by changing the transmission of uh, T1 and T2. And uh, we can uh, sweep uh, V1 and V2 uh, with the same bias and measure uh, the cross correlation signal with the total input current. And what we see is we have some slightly positive but averagely uh, very close to zero cross correlation with globally a slope close to zero. So which is uh, typically, typically what we expect from some fermionic uh, behavior. Uh, we can also do that uh, in the new equals three uh, fermionic case. And we recover the same result, meaning that we have some slightly positive, but no actual slope uh, in this curve, showing that we have a P factor around zero, which is expected also for the uh, new equal three case. Okay, now the most interesting part. Uh, if we sweep the field to one third and stay in the very weak backscattering regime, so here the dilution of the source is 5%, and record again with uh, the total input current, the cross correlation, we see a clear negative uh, signature uh, which is uh, directly, uh, um, uh, yes, which is directly a signature of bunching effect, meaning that uh, in this regime, particle uh, tends to uh, create packets of charge at the output of uh, the beam splitter. And if we uh, if we fit the slope, we find a slope and therefore a p factor of minus 1.9, which is very, very close from the minus two prediction uh, of the theory paper. So we can do that for different dilution of the input. And uh, we also, uh, we always measure some negative cross correlation with a slope 
always very close to the, this minus two value. And you can do it again for even uh, higher, uh, smaller dilution. Uh, but what you can see is the more, uh, the more we go away from this weak backscattering regime, the more nonlinear start to be uh, the QPC. Uh, so what we can do is uh, try to uh, go directly in the so-called strong backscattering regime. So in this regime, we expect some uh, to uh, recover some fermionic uh, behavior and some fermionic uh, particle emission at the QPC. So if we remain at very small current, because here we see the, the transmission is very, very nonlinear, but if we remain at very small current, we see that we have a, a, a curve. So this uh, is equivalent to a single shot noise autocorrelation uh, curve. And we have uh, at first a curve that will stick to the prediction for electron. And at some point, you will deviate and will tend to go back to the one third uh, slope. And if we uh, watch the result of the collider, this is uh, very clear. So uh, up to this point, you see some uh, positive cross correlation up to a point where the transmission will tend to go back to the weak backscattering regime and you will start to recover a negative slope and at some point even negative cross correlation. Okay, another thing that have been uh, achieved uh, is, uh, so this is a calculation from the Rosno paper of the variation of uh, this pseudo final factor with the imbalance of uh, the collider. So to do that, uh, we keep the same transmission as the input, but we let V1 and V2 to be different. So here, the difference I minus is no longer zero. So here are the results for a different imbalance. So the blue one will be uh, the uh, collider, the balance collider uh, with the slope minus two. And you see that as you imbalance, you will have more and more uh, negative cost correlation. And if you fit it, uh, with uh, the prediction from the Rosno paper, we have we are in very good agreement with anion collision for the Laughlin state and a phase P over three. Okay, so to conclude, I've shown you today that uh, we are able with this uh, multiple uh, quantum point uh, geometry and this collider geometry, we are able to uh, highlight and differentiate between fermionic and anionic statistics and those independently of the charge. So what we see, what we see on, the, on the left panel is uh, the single quantum point contact shot noise but renormalized by the charge. And as we can see uh, is uh, this kind of experiment will only, on, <clears throat> only uh, give information about the charge as long as if you divide everything by the charge, they will give you all the same curve. On the other hand, you have the cross correlation the output of the anion collider. And uh, even if we uh, renormalize by the charge, you have a clear distinction between the fermionic state and the anionic state. And uh, the anionic state gives uh, the p-factor uh, in good agreement with anionic uh, statistic. So to finish, uh, what's next? Uh, so uh, this collider uh, can be bring, brought to other feeling factors. So I'm thinking of maybe two thirds, two fifths, and maybe a more exotic feeling factor after that. Uh, thank you for your, your attention and thank you for the organizer for this wonderful workshop. Thank you, Hugo, for the very good talk. Uh,